Hello everyone, my name's Callum from Bluehub and if you haven't watched one of our videos before or even if you have, Bluehub are one of the implementation partners of a system called Sin7 Core. Sin7 Core is, is a system that's been around for a while now and Bluehub itself has been implementing off-shelf systems for around about 10 years and we've been implementing Sin7 for about 6. Now today's video is to introduce you to the system on is if you are a manufacturer or you're a product seller, even a wholesaler and distributor, but you do actually make products. We do have another video on um, focusing on the system if you're a wholesale, distributor, or e-commerce and you're not manufacturing, so please refer to that one if you do not make things. And if you do, you're in the right place, and hopefully I can give you a bit of an insight today on what Sin7 Core looks like for you as a manufacturer. So, to get started with Sin7 Core, so Sin7 Core, as a bit of background, is an off-the-shelf cloud inventory manufacturing system. It used to be called Deer Systems. It's now under the umbrella of Sin7 alongside its sister system, Sin7 Omni. Now, when you log into the system, the first screen that you'll be presented with is the dashboard view, and this is where you can get a view of everything that's going on in the system. You can update um, this dashboard by changing different date ranges. You can manage this dashboard by changing what information you wish to see. And you can see some really useful information in here, such as um, statuses of purchase orders. We can see statuses of sales in all of our different stages, our top selling, our worst selling customers. Our KPIs around orders, around revenue, net profit, pending orders, due and overdue, and even our top selling and our worst selling products. In terms of navigation, the navigational panel for Sin7 Core is on the left hand side, or alternatively, controversially, if you prefer it across the top, depending on what your preference is. Me personally, I prefer it on the left hand side. We have our main modules on the left here. Now, as we're focusing on manufacturing today, we're going to start within inventory and products, and we're going to start by introducing you to the different types of bills and materials that are available in Sin7 Core. So, to get started with, I'm going to open up a product in here. Now, it's worth mentioning that with all products and data in the system, this can all be imported and exported. So whether that's importing your bills and materials or raw materials, that can all be done in bulk and doesn't have to be done manually like I'm doing today. So opening up my product in here, this brings me to our product screen. And when you can see on the left hand side here, here is all the information you can store against the products. And you can store relevant data such as codes, names, categories, brands, costing methods, which is really important for manufacturers. So you've got FIFO and uh, FIFO and FIFO, sorry, first in, first out, and first expiry, first out. And then we've also got batch and serialization. Serialization, really useful if you're selling you know, electrical items or uni unique things or batches, perhaps for food products or groups of items. Within here, we can also track data such as barcodes, minimum stock levels, warranties, HS codes, country of origin. And on the left, you can see there's much more data that we can hold, such as price tiers around how much we're going to be selling our products for to different tiers of customers. So wholesale trade, we can define who our suppliers are for perhaps raw materials. We can hold multiple suppliers in here as well and the different prices on which we pay for them and also our minimum order quantities and lead times as well. <clears throat> now. Bills of materials, there are three types of bills of materials in Sin7. And the first one is assembly bill of materials. Assembly bills of materials is really useful if you are a low scale manufacturer, you perhaps put together bundles or kits, or you're not that interested in tracking like resources and um, machine time and scheduling. An assembly bomb might be the fit for you. And it's as simple as to make this lumber walnut product, we're going to tell the system by adding components in here like so. To make this lumber walnut, it takes component A, and it takes component B, and it takes one of A and two of B. And just for a costing purpose, we do want to track some labor in here, and we want to just track a quantity of one, and then you need to set up a price tier against that labor to generate an actual cost. So you might have that in 10 pounds, perhaps to track 10 pounds per hour. And that's as simple as things get for assembly bills and materials. And to actually process assembly bills and materials, we can then go into a separate tab like so, and we can go to production, 
we can go to assembly and create a new assembly and we can do that by saying where we're going to be making that particular item we can choose the SKU in which we wish to make so I'm just going to type in a test um, I'm just going to put an item in here actually that we have let's just see if we have something um, we will use this item here so we've got a, a block of butter in this particular place we've got a work in progress account which is where the value of our raw materials will be posted and we've got a finished goods account which is where the value of the goods will be posted once they're finished we tell the system how many we want to make in this case we want to make one we can dictate a batch and serial number for the finished item and we can load our bill of materials like so and it will load everything that we need to make this particular item okay we can actually now edit this bills and materials should we wish by deleting off certain items as well and we can also add items as well should we want to change this bills and materials and once we're happy with that we can go ahead and select authorize on this on the right hand side here and then we can complete the pick section of this particular order and then we can click allocate and that's a processing of bills and materials. So you can see it's very basic and straightforward. You can also see I don't have the stock in this particular case, but that's how easy and straightforward assembly bills and materials are in terms of processing time and data it requires. So it's a decision for you to make is do you want to go full level or do you want to track it nice and straightforward? On the other hand, we have the other two types of bills and materials. We have production and make to order. And both of these bills and materials are under the production or advanced manufacturing module um, umbrella in SIN 7 Core. Now, production bill of materials is similar to assembly, but we're tracking more data. And make to order bomb works on the premise of production bill of materials, but it's for people who make bespoke items. And it's where you can have a number of options that you can choose from, and that will alter your bills and materials based on those options that are selected. For for example, take an iPhone. If you were to go to Apple's website, you would pick the iPhone 14 or what, what, whichever number we may be on now, and you would select the um, memory size, you would select the color, and then you would select the model. And depending on the options you selected on Apple's back end, that would probably have a bill of materials for them to make the item, assuming they haven't already made them to stock. But essentially, it gives you different options to make from. We're going to be focusing on production bomb today. So now that I've selected production bill of materials, this is now my bills and materials, and you can see it looks a little bit more complex than assembly. Firstly, we have version control with production bill of materials, and that's where we can track different versions of an item. This could be used for different processes, or it could be used for new versions of the item, which is as it's probably intended. We have quantity to produce, which is where we can stipulate how much this bill of materials is based upon. And we also have a component issue method, which we can use manual or back flush. Manual is we want to manually dictate how much we've used during the process. Back flush is, as I like to term, finished production as planned. So at the end of production, we just click compete. And SIN 7 assumes that everything that was in our bill of materials in terms of quantities is correct and we're not going to be making any changes to it. With the actual bills of materials itself, everything is split out into steps. So we define steps in which an operation must go through to actually complete the job. Now we have in this case two steps and within each step we have a type. We have manufacturing, which is we're building something have setup and quality control which are time only operations and we have co-manufacturing which is where we're going to be outsourcing that operation we're not going to look at co-manufacturing today but we do have a playlist on co-manufacturing if that is of interest within each step we then have line types and we can define components resources which are people or machines notes which are free text attachments which can be doc documents or images we have finished products, which are byproducts of an operation, so a finished item that may come out of this process, but we're not actually going to be used as part of the finished item. Uh, an example I always use is a chocolate manufacturer. When they're making the bars, they will have offcuts and perhaps shavings. Then offcuts and shavings will perhaps be melted down and reused again. So that is a byproduct that we wish to use and it is not wastage. So essentially, it's one way of tracking wastage. 
And finally, we have inputs and outputs, which are really useful. And these are semi-finished goods that we're carrying through our process. So, for example, in step one, we may output component A, which is a semi-finished uh, product. Then in stage two, we may input that component because we wish to use it throughout the process. So it's how you can carry parts throughout your process. So that's the premise of production bills and materials. Now, before we go into looking at the actual process, there's also a little bit of setup that you need to do. And within production and settings, this is where you can set up, firstly, your resources. So these are your people and your machines, which you can set up in here. We have work centres, which is where things are going to be actually carried out. And then we also have suspend reasons, which is where jobs can be stopped for certain reasons. Finally, we also have process settings, which is where you can tell since, since Evan how you want your process to work. So the major option here is create production order when. And we have two options. We have when order is authorised. So this is really if you're a make to order business and you you get sales orders in, and based on those sales orders, you will produce directly off the back of them. On the other hand, you have make to stock, which is where you would use via smart reordering or MRP, and that's where you'd create your production orders manually. We then also have put the option to automate our purchasing process, which is where if we don't have the raw materials in stock, since seven will automatically create draft purchase for orders for us. It will automatically create nested production orders if we have nested bills and materials. And also it will automatically create transfers if we have stock in different locations that we need to move around. So we're just going to be going on the premise that we make to stock here and we're trying to keep things high level as an overview today. So to get things started, we're going to focus on our, our production in here and we can create a new production order by going into production and new production order at the top like so. We can ten, then type in our SKU on which we wish to create. So we were just working on SKU number 64. So I can type in 64, which is our lumber walnut. We can tell the system how many we want to make. So we want to make 10. We can then also use this useful maximum order quantity field, which generates once we tell the system where we're making it. And it will tell us how many we can actually make based on raw materials we have in stock. And in this case, it's zero. Capacity calculation. So this is where we can start to get an idea of when we're planning production for. And we can do this in three ways. The first way is we can use plan date forward and we can tell the system when we want to think about starting the operation, which is the 14th tomorrow. And then we can click refresh and then the system will give us a release date, which is when is when we should have all of our raw materials and capacity available to start and a required by date when we can actually finish the operation. We can then also do a just in time model, which is where we can go from, we can populate when we need this item by, so the 29th, we can click refresh and, this, and the system will then tell us when's the last possible date on which we can get everything ready by. And finally, you can ignore all of that and you can put in your own dates and you don't have to use the automatic calculation. So that's up to you. In the top right hand corner, we also have our finished goods and whip accounts, which again, similar to assembly, is where we'll post our value of our raw materials into work in progress when we start, and our finished goods count, which is where we'll post our values once the process is completed. Scrolling down, we can then load our bill of materials, which loads our bill of materials. Anything in blue is items that we have available, and anything in uh, red is anything that we actually need to purchase. Now, I've noticed, and at this point, we can actually edit our bill of materials and we can delete and add. Now, I've noticed for some reason that we are going to be using some gloves as part of our operation. So I can actually make an amendment here and swap this out for a component like so. Once we're happy with that, we can then choose to authorise our particular production order and we can also release this into production. Now that we've released this into production, we can make use of some of the main reasons that people decide to use the production module over the assembly bill of materials and that's the scheduling functionality. Now, the scheduling functionality is going to give you really good visibility on your orders, your capacity and how you can actually move things around. And the first view you get is the calendar view which is what we're on here and this is where we can see what orders we have in the system at high level like so. 
We can then move to the planning view, which is where we can view any orders that are in the planning stage. And then we can go to production where we can see anything that's currently due to be um, actually been released, sorry, into the system. And we can extend this out by viewing the individual stages. We can see how many we're making, any progress we've made, and also the priority, which can actually be amended by using the edit button and selecting within here to high, medium or low. We can also change the entire date of the operation by selecting these boxes and dragging and dropping and move these around in the scheduler. We do also have a sales and purchase view, which is really useful if you're made to order. And this is where you can directly correlate manufacturing orders to sales orders and see how they link to each other. So if a customer calls to check on an order, you can be transparent and let them know, if you want to be that is, um, of where their manufacturing order is and the progress that you've actually made. So these are really big benefits. And finally, we have the capacity planner, which is in here. And this is where we can see how much time we have available for our actual resources, which are our people and machines that we've looked at previously. We can define a date range on which we wish to look at. So let's look at this week, which is the 12th to the 16th. And we can refresh that. And we can now see for all of our individual machines, how much we have total time, our available time, if any is allocated, and that's then split down into planned orders and released orders. And we can also see how much has been consumed. So if you're getting order inquiries, you can actually use this screen to make an assessment of whether or not you actually do have the time to make it. So it can be a really big benefit alongside the scheduler. OK, so back to our order. To get things moving, we can now use the production run and production run is how we initiate our operation. And these are essentially batches. So if we had an order to produce 500, we may have five batches of 100. In this case, we're making 10. So I'm just going to do one production run of 10. When we do that, it brings us out on a tabulated column and we can select in here and we can see it pulls in our two stages from our bill of materials that we've already set up. And we have all of our details, including notes and attachments, times, work centers, components, and also our resources included. And again, we can make changes at this point if we want to. We can also go back to the order tab and check in the related order section here. And you can see since someone has actually generated some purchase orders for me because we have the automated purchase order function turned on. And this is where we can take a look at the purchasing module now and purchase the relevant components for this job. So the purchasing module in since seven is very straightforward and and because this item is actually and this purchase order has actually been completed for us, we can already see our information is populated in here like so. And it's already pre-populated what we actually need to buy in this case. If you were doing this manually, you'd only need to put in your supplier. But because it was automatic, it already knows this. It already knows exactly what we need, quantity, price, and any additional costs if relevant. We can authorize this and email this directly to our supplier using the email and purchase order function. Stock can be received in numerous different ways using this screen I have here, or you can use a barcode scanning app to actually book in this stock. We can copy this from our order, pre-book this in, dictate a batch and serial number. Alternatively, SIN7 can populate this for us if we leave this blank. And when we click authorize, it will populate them serial numbers for me, and that will then be booked into stock. And our invoice from our supplier can be entered once we receive this, like so. And if you're connected to anything like Xero or QuickBooks Online, this bill and purchase will all be sent directly to those systems for processing and payment to be made. And we can repeat this process for any other purchase orders that we have already in the system. And as you can see, me just clicking through this, you can see how easy the actions are to complete. Now that we're happy with this process in here and we have all our goods in stock, we can remove these tabs like so. We can go back to our production order and we now have all the goods to start our operation. So two options for processing production in SIN7. SIN7 has a really cool app called the MES app and we will have some videos on that shortly. And that's how you can control your entire manufacturing operation from your phone or barcode scanning device. 
Now, I'm going to be using it on the computer today, which some of our, plenty of our clients do actually. So two options, we can click start on this process and we can actually give this screen to our production facility within a reduced state in terms of permissions that they have access to. Or me as the office or production planner, I can click start on this and I can now print a production run playlist or I can print out an entire job traveller or production order notes for them to work across. And those, and those can be printed by clicking print and clicking the option, which will then be downloaded for you. And that can be printed very easily. And you can amend these and I can easily see my work sort of number, what I'm making, the operations, people involved and components that are required. Now that I've completed start on my operation, this is actually starting a timer on this process and seeing in how long it takes me to to actually carry out. So if you're using this on the shop floor, you can start to get real-time data capture. Now, in terms of reporting my quantity usage, I get that sheet handed back to me. I can update this or I can update this real-time on the shop floor. I can update my quantities by saying, yes, I've used five of these items and I can populate my actual time in there. Or you can use the auto consume button. And since everyone will presume that you've used what you actually have on hand, and in my case, it's actually split these out because I have quantities split over two batches. Once I click complete, that will actually pre-populate my actual time for me. And that can then be reviewed at a later date by a manager and then edited if required. And I can repeat this process on my next stage by clicking start. Auto consume. And complete. And now this because is my final operation, it gives me the opportunity to output this product because there's nothing left to do. And I can populate a batch and serial number if required, or I can automatically generate it if required. I can complete the output. And I can define a date on which this is finished and mark this as completed. And that is our production process end to end completed. So that is an overview of assembly and production bills and materials in SIN 7 and at a very high level of how purchases work into that as well. But of course, as a manufacturer and a product maker, you also need to sell these items. So the sales module in SIN 7 can be accessed via sales and using the sales module in here, we can view all of our existing sales in the system. We can filter out our sales by using the filter box on the right hand side. We can even add custom filters where we can really specify what information we want to see. We can create a new sale by clicking the plus button in here. And we can define who we're selling this product to from a drop down. We can add a new customer or we can even start to type in the customer's name like so. That will pre-populate all of our information and also give us a heads up on the customer's credit limit. And scrolling down to the body of the order, we can see that since it also follows a linear process in sales in terms of order, pick, pack, ship, invoice. Pack is the only process that is not um, mandatory and can be skipped. If we wish to quote this actual order, we can untick the quote option and that will give us the option to quote as well. So let's now sell our lumber walnut that we have just created, which we can see in here. And we can hover over this product to see how availability. Now I can actually see that I've got none available and that's because I need to change my location because we have just created it in our production facility and we do have this available as we can see. We can populate a price for which we want to sell this item at, and we can also charge any services such as shipping should we want to. Once we're happy with our quotation, we can click save on this quote, and then we can email this directly to the customer by using the email and print tab, which we can email directly from the system, or we can print this and send it via an external um, email provider. Once the customer's happy and we've confirmed that, we can take this to the order and we can click copy and that will copy everything over. And if there's any amendments we need to make, we can carry those out in here. And we can go ahead and select authorize on our order and we can pro progress to picking and packing and shipping the order. Now, similar to production, we can process the picking and packing and shipping on this screen here, or we can use Sin7's purpose-built WMS app 
which stands for warehouse management system to pick, pack and ship this order. So it's completely up to you. We can pick this by selecting it manually, like so, or we can auto pick and Zinzem will pick the best product for us based on a FIFO or FIFO methodology, dependent on what you'd assign to the um, product itself. Once we've picked this order, we can also print a pick list or email a pick list should we want to. And then we can proceed to pack the order to tell the system how many boxes it's been placed in. And we can ship the order out of the system by defining the carrier that we've sent this with and also populating a tracking number should we wish. And we can invoice the customer by using the invoice section, which is where we can populate a quantity, a price, and we can email this directly to the customer using the invoice tab and selecting authorize, which will post this to QuickBooks or Xero retrospectively um, to actually process the invoice for payment itself. Now that we've completed that, we, we do also have a credit note and restock function, which is where we can manage returns. So if the customer wishes to return that product, we can issue a credit note for the items that we've just sold. And we can choose to copy the shipping if we want to refund that. I do not wish to in this case. And I can process the restock to bring these goods back into the system. And I can define a restock location if we want to put that somewhere separate for processing because it's returned stock. Finally, on this overview for manufacturers, we're going to take a look at reports. Now, reports are a really important part of any business, and it's also probably one of the major reasons that you're looking at a system like this, because you're asking your staff to put all this time and effort into using it, but you need, as a business owner or whoever may be looking at this, you, you want to see the output of that and the actual data, and since it has a really good reporting module, which is where you can perform those analytics and collect that data. And it splits these out into different sections of sales, inventory, purchasing, and even production. For example, in sales, I can come into a, a bunch of pre rolled reports and I can go into, let's say in this particular case, sales by product details. And all reports in Sin7 are built on a pivot table basis, so you can really customise them to whatever is available in that particular report. I can change the date range of the information I want to look at. I can even automate these reports to send them me on strict time frames. I can then configure this layout as well to, to pull in any hidden fields that may not be natively available in this report like so. And I can make this look however I want to. So in my head, I want to actually look at um, profit by products in the last month. So I'm going to drag out category. I'm going to take out month. And now I can actually see by product, by, well, let's take out invoice as well. I can see by product, a quantity sold in the last month. I can see how much it cost me to sell these. I can see if any journals were added to those orders, so any overheads. And I can see my profit by these products as well. So it's really easy to get to that information. And focusing on manufacturing specifically, we can go into the production reports and there's a bunch of reports that you can gather around production, such as cost analysis, shortages for production, downtime. So if people are pausing operations, how much money are you actually losing for people pausing? Traceability, which is where we can trace what products have gone to what customers and where did we get them from and what suppliers and even resource efficiency as well. So we can come into the production resource efficiency report, and this is where we can see the actual efficiency of our, of our items. So if I take out production order in this case, and I also take out production run, I can see by operation, by resource, how much time I planned in that particular month and how much I actually spent. So you can actually see, you know, are we operating as we planned or are we going over or are we going under as well? So in this case, we can see we were minus 95.25 minutes over the last month. So there's really good data that you can actually get out of this by using the production module. So hopefully this has given you a good insight into Sin7 from a manufacturer's point of view. If, you, if you're still considering Sin7 and you're not sure on which build materials is right for you, we do have a video on specifically should you be using assembly or should you be using production. 
um, and it may be worth referencing that. If you're looking at implementing SIN 7 or if you need any help, feel free to head to our website bluehub.co.uk. We have been implementing the production module since its release date and it is our one of our favourite types of clients to look after. So feel free to head to our website and apply for a call and you can have a chat with myself or one of my colleagues to see if and how we might be able to help. Or if you're already using the module and do need some assistance, feel free to let us know. And if you do have any brief questions, feel free to leave a comment um, below this video and we'll try and get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching this video.